as luscious and as beautiful as ice wine is, it really is a real hassle to harvest. But first of all, it's just plain getting the right harvest date. You know, unless the clouds move away and allow all the heat from the day to evaporate, it's not going to get cold. So you really are sitting on pins and needles. Then you have all these people on standby. So you have ticked off employees. So it is finally time to go out and harvest. It's just plain hard, cold work. You may only have a one or two hour window. Other times you have a 14 hour window. You have to be prepared for both because you don't know that could be the last cold night of the year. And then even after you harvest the grapes, you're pressing stones, you're like literally getting only one drop of juice from every single berry. Hard to ferment, even down the bottom line, tea tips and it's just dominoes. Oh, <laughs> God. Yeah. So, you know, it's crazy. Does that happen? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Not on this show. I like it. I respect that. <laughs> I respect that answer much more. Yeah. yeah. There's two things that make a great wine region, and that is soil and climate. Those are the only two things that make yeah. a great wine region. Nothing else matters. You know, the people, we're all transferable. We've got French winemakers making wine here. We've got Canadian winemakers making wine in Burgundy, yeah. right? Uh, technology, you pick up the phone, you order the equipment. It doesn't matter where the equipment is anywhere in the world. It gets shipped here or gets shipped to France, gets shipped to Australia. Our soil is second to none. I've yet to meet a winemaker that hasn't come here and gone, oh my God, you have some of the greatest soil on earth to make wine because it's limestone clay loam soils. That's what every winemaker wants. We want limestone. Why is that? It is the soil structure that gives the most flavor to grapes. It actually makes it harder to grow in the soil. And because the grapes have to struggle a little bit, they work harder to survive. And that means they work harder to put the roots down farther and gain more complexities. We're actually a little bit warmer than Burgundy. That growing season from May to October, that curve that goes through our average monthly temperature is a little bit warmer than Burgundy. So I call us Burgundy on steroids, right? Mm, Burgundy's not so special. No, I wouldn't say Burgundy. <laughs> I wouldn't say sure that's what you just said. Yeah, no, no, no. It's gotcha. Like, no, I, I actually didn't say the Burgundy isn't so special. What I'm saying is, is Niagara is as special or more special than Burgundy. More and special. Got more it. special. <laughs> and, and people don't and people don't realize that. We've been chugging ice wine pretty much all day, yeah. so... Chugging. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, I think we're gonna kind of take a breather and have Len here take care of us and however he sees fit. We are one of the originals in Niagara from the period when things got exciting back in the 70s. Always. Yeah. <laughs> in the 70s, things started to change. We started planting new varieties, and these are the varieties. The Vitis vinifera, they're called, from Europe. Riesling, Chardonnay, Cabernet, Merlot, those were all Vitis vinifera. Before that, all of the grapes grown here were native varieties, native to North America. Varieties like Concord, not very good for wine, but great for jams, jellies, and juice. Think of Welch's. And so we were in the kind of in the vanguard of that. Started our winery in 86, and we've been making wine ever since. It's been informative for both my brain and my liver. Yeah. <laughs> Your liver will be fine. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm not worried about it. This, yeah. He's a tough old guy. I just tell him what to do. Yeah. All right. All right. Welcome to Siouxland Staff Estate Winery. Yeah, boy, you got a bell there or are you just happy to see me? I got a bell here. Not happy to see me. Trying to get a good rhythm going. Uh, oh, there we go. Okay. And we're going to go have lunch. Yeah. Um, I'm excited to see it. It's apparently <laughs> There we go. There we go. All right. Okay. Good, 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 good. <laughs> yeah. Loves cameras. This actually is my wine shop. It's also yeah. my kitchen. And that's the idea. All the best parties are in the kitchen. I want people to come in, put their elbows on the table, relax, and have a good time. All right. Some of our uh, homegrown and house cured prosciutto. And try, try the Vidal and try some other mm. ice wines. Try the Oh, this is fantastic. Uh, I guess what gives me my claim to fame for ice wine is that I was uh, the winemaker at Pilatary Estates for 10 years and winemaker of the year, and twice proclaimed as one of the top four women in the world in wine. And I think it was because of all the ice wines I made. So the joke in the wine industry, my, my nickname is the Ice Queen, and I hope it's because of my ice wines, <laughs> not my personality. <laughs> Can you guys throw me the Gabert's ice wine next? There you go. We just want to tell Sue Ann. We'll tell her what. For lunch today, we're just going to have a, this very really simple sort of a couple of variations on duck. So I think paired with the ice wine should be fantastic. If you were to go out now and say, we had duck breast for lunch and we had an ice wine with it, you'd be like, that's just crazy talk. That just doesn't happen. We usually think of ice wine as being a dessert wine or something you'd have your cheese course with uh, Rockport cheese or some type of blue cheese. But this is a main course with duck and, and onion. You really can, with the right pairings, take ice wine through all the different courses. I think onion looks perfect with the caramelization from the sugar. Everything's perfect. Mm. Fabulous. Which, uh, which course is next? Unfermented ice wine sorbet. I Ooh. called up Magdalena from the Wine Council and I yes. said, who's picked ice wine? Because I need some juice. This is kind of from Stratus Vineyards and it's 2013 Semillon, straight off the press. Do you have many clusters of grapes for first taken for your, your uh, <laughs> ice wine sorbet today? More sorbet, Substantial. man. Substantial. <laughs> More sorbet. Considering every berry gives you one 
one drop. drop. That's what I'm wow. saying. Uh, yeah. yeah, there's about 100 clusters, I think, yeah. right here. So, do you actually go for like a true float and do the sparkling ice wine? Yeah, that's what What do you think? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sparkling ice wine is a new phenomenon pioneered by Inniskillen Winery. A true delicacy. I think this is one of the first red sparkling ice wines ever produced. And then, yes, I was a gold medal winner at FFS in Sumo, which is pretty fantastic. Wow. My goodness. This is awesome. Yeah, get Bravo. Our ice wine float is one now one of the craziest things I've ever had. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. Yeah. So we have one more uh, course to go, yes? What's coming up next? An apple crumble. Oh, that oh, was very good. good. I think with your Riesling, mm. it would be fantastic with it. The 2007 Riesling ice wine. So this is potentially the sweetest ice wine you've ever tasted. It's a 28 in sugar code. 2007 was a hot, dry year. So the uh, wines were really quite ripe. This is all from this property here. So with the, being in the 20 mile venture, we have some really great mineral characteristics to it. And so this actually is gonna be kind of neat with the, the, the charred elements so the, and the charred sugars and stuff will be neat with the, the aged complexes from the wine as well. So again, you know, bringing the life of the wine into the different components on the plate. Okay. Hey. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> I think that we've had um, a four course meal really, all with ice wine. And not once have we gone for the water glass. The wine has done the job. Mm. It's cleansed the palate. It's mm -hmm. kept it intriguing, kept it fun, kept it interesting. If we'd been looking for water uh, to cleanse the palate, we know that the wine wouldn't have done what it was supposed to do. So. Cheers. Cheers, cheers. Thank you for uh, coming to oh, the uh, to the old family homestead. Mm. All right, well, it's a pretty full day. I think we drank pretty much all the wine in Niagara region. I don't have all the statistics in front of me, but we definitely hit the top 90%. Yeah, um, exactly. I'm exhausted. It's, it's rough yeah. drinking wine from 10 a.m. onwards. It's not an easy gig. It's hard work, but someone's got to do it. Um, I think we both earned a nap. Nap time. Boom. Later.